going to start off uh, a, a little bit light with you guys. I want to start off with a movie. Now, some of you all may have seen this, so if you have, please don't say anything. But what I want you to do is silently to yourself, count how many times the people in the white shirts bounce the ball. Silently to yourself, don't say anything out loud. So if you'll roll the tape, count how many times the people in the white shirts bounce the ball. Okay, the proper answer is 10 or 11, depending on if you count the one that bounced off the person's head, so I'll give you 10 or 11. Now, if you have not seen the video again, how many of you all saw the gorilla? A, a smattering, this, this was a 25 second video, the gorilla was in it for eight seconds, 90% of you did not see it. I'm gonna show it to you one more time. This is not David Copperfield magic. Go ahead and roll it one more time. Why did we miss the gorilla? You were so focused on what I told you to do, which was count how many times the people in the white shirts bounce the ball, that you missed the gorilla walk in right there, stops in the middle of the screen, pounds his or her chest, and walks off stage. All right, I'm gonna be, I'm, I'm gonna be your guide today to kind of teach you how to see the gorilla. The gorilla is, is really gonna be focused around service and how we build a team to execute on that. I started my career at Chuck E. Cheese in 1982, actually uh, 35 years ago yesterday. When I turned 16, I went in and applied at Chuck E. Cheese. I worked there for 18 years. I left in 2001, and I've really spent the bulk of my time consulting in how to build hospitality and guest service programs, primarily in the restaurant industry. And you can see it goes from the, the low end of the food chain all the way up. There's some retail in there. Everybody's trying to do the same thing. How do we quantify a great guest experience? How do we determine what that does to our top and our bottom line? And then most importantly, how do we get people to execute on this? Now, about seven years ago, I became a franchisee of Witch Witch, which is a sandwich shop. It's, a, it's definitely differentiated to kind of fit in with the theme of this conference. Anybody ever been to a Witch Witch? It's different. It's different. I spend about half my time doing what we're doing here, speaking at manager conferences, consulting and working with, with people, building training programs and guest service programs. And then the other half of my time, I live in the operations world, running my sandwich chains. I use it as a lab. I love to test out what works, what incentive programs work, what's a cool way we can communicate with this generation, what are some things that we can put into place. So I wanna, I wanna share with you what we've done I've written a couple books and those kind of things. And, and most importantly, when you really talk about differentiation, this is where my aha moment started in 2005. We were getting ready to launch our franchise group of Witch Witch. I had the opportunity, I was writing for QSR Magazine. And they, they wanted to write an article on who was the best restaurant training company in the US and it could not be Chick-fil-A because everything's been written about Chick-fil-A. And I found this company in Kingsport, Tennessee. There's somebody, I know I ran into somebody at dinner last night from the same area. These guys run a million six in an 1,100 square foot drive through only restaurant. They put 200 cars an hour through a single lane drive through Chick-fil-A's on the top end of the scale. They're in the 75 range. They make one mistake every 3,600 orders. Now think about how easy our job would be as business owners if our employees made a mistake once every 3,600 times they were doing something. It would be easy. 26 restaurants, no corporate overhead, no accounting department, no training department, no HR department. There's the founder, the president, and an admin that replies back to the emails that says, no, we don't franchise. This was my differentiating moment. When I said, wow, if I'm gonna build a restaurant company, this blew the ceiling off how good good could be. You can go to their Business Excellence Institute there. It's pretty inexpensive to go. You want to learn how to really redefine your business. It has nothing to do with running a drive through It's how to build a lean organization through systems. So 18 years at Chuck E. Cheese, 15 years being a consultant, seven years being a franchisee. Here it is, the success formula. Everybody write this down. This is it. My son's a mechanical engineering student. He told me the answer was six. I have no idea. Actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of boil it down to these five things. It's an acronym, SMART. Our company's called the SMART Restaurant Group. Really, it's an acronym for our investors' names. But these are the five things 
that no matter if you're running a bowling center, any kind of FEC, retail, restaurant, this is where you need to go. It starts with systems. Systems help extraordinary things happen with ordinary people. Systems allow you to differentiate and then replicate. Because if, especially if you want to grow, we went from two restaurants to 10 restaurants in a year. I used to, I, we own nine witch witches. I always joke around, I say, well, I own seven restaurants and two charities. So those of you guys that own businesses can kind of get that. Those of you guys that don't, it's a FedEx joke, you'll get it tomorrow, okay? All right? I'm gonna start with systems. Systems help you differentiate and replicate. Here's a couple examples. Here's the financial example of it. Five versus a four, we measure guest surveys. We take thousands of guest surveys in our restaurants year after year. If we get a five on employee friendliness versus a four on employee friendliness, the difference in our taste of the food scores is 91% of them give us a five on the food if we get a five on friendly. If we get a four on friendly, only 37% of the people give us a five on the taste of the food. Think about the difference. Now, I want to I illustrate this to you. I want everybody at your table, turn to the person on your left, turn to the person on your right, and just greet them as if you could care less about them. Should be pretty simple for most of us, okay? <laughs> All right, okay, that's good, that's good. We're on a tight time schedule, tight time schedule here. Now, what I want you to do, greet the same people on your left and on your right, but act like they're a long lost friend. <laughs> All right, time out, time out. We're about to have a sexual harassment lawsuit over here. We got hugging going on. The difference between a four and a five is the exercise you all just did there. Four is, oh, it's just you. Five's great to see you again. You think about all the money you put into the products and the facilities and the food. And then when people come in and get just an okay experience, they're not gonna come back. We see this timeliness of the experience and employee friendliness are two of the key drivers in intent to return. I heard it from Dave and Buster's today. We're trying to get people to come back. You heard it from Synergy this morning. We're trying to get frequency. That's where it is. Squeezing another dollar is not as valuable as getting that person to come back one more time. So think about all the interaction points that your employees have with your guests. And can we put some systems into place to define what is a five versus what is a four? I'm in a cashier-driven environment. We have banned the phrase next in our restaurant. I hate that when somebody goes next, next, next. That's not a five behavior. Great to see you again. I'm ready. Step on up when you're ready. Those are five behaviors. Define all of those points that you have in your experience. And you're dealing with hundreds of interaction points in many of your facilities. We've got interactions for long periods of time, hour and a half. We have to have fives each and every time because if somebody drops the ball, you lose. You lose. This, in our case, we do 30% higher sales volumes than the witch witches in the markets that we're in, and I firmly believe it is due to this. We have measured guest service since day one, store one. And then we can put systems into place. And I want to walk you through some of those things. I, I kind of took a page from uh, Bubba Gump's, if you guys have ever eaten there, or Fogo de Chao, you know, the high-end Brazilian steak places. What do what the red and yellow discs on the table mean? Bring me meat or don't bring me meat. And you think about that. Why is that? They're, they're charging $59 a person to come in and eat at that restaurant. What is that disc there for? It's a system for you as the guest to control, bring me more food or don't bring me more food. Bubba Gump's does it with license plates. They have a red one, stop for a stop. That means I need some help. I could be in a Bubba Gump's and if I see one red license plate, I can go right over there and get them the need taken care of. It helps us execute. I did this at Chuck E. Cheese a long time ago, and I don't think they do this anymore. But when you used to go to Chuck E. Cheese, you got a red number that had, uh, the red number had your pizza so we could find you. And then we had a blue, what we called internally a check back stand. What it was for the guest was our service guarantee. 
If everything's not 100% satisfactory, let us know immediately and we'll replace it free of charge. I quit 15 years ago, I still haven't memorized. But what the blue stand was for us, it signified if somebody is eating and there's a blue stand on the table, nobody has been there to check back on the guest. So it was a system to help ordinary people do extraordinary things. Now that may not work in your environment, that's not the point. It's, it, the point is to think about how you can put systems into place to help your ordinary employees deliver extraordinary results to your guests. I did this in my case, because if, you, if you've ever been in a witch witch, it's very confusing. Most sandwich places, you do the subway shuffle, you just walk down the line, you tell them what you want. In our case, you fill out a bag, there's 50 different sandwiches, there's 50 different toppings on there. People walk in, during the headlights, no idea what to do. We looked at our guest survey data. First time guests, 20 points lower than our regular guests. So we came up with a system. We came up with these little one stickers. When somebody came in and we had somebody out front that was explaining this to the guest, oh, you've never been here before? Great, let me just tell you a little bit about it. Here's how it goes. We put the one sticker on it and then we trained our employees. Same employees that were delivering 60 level of service yesterday to these guests. Cashier, when somebody comes up with a one sticker on their bag, automatically give them a free large drink. It's a plastic cup they can bring back for discounted refills. Make sure their order's right. Don't embarrass them. In our case, if you leave the name off and your sandwich is ready a few minutes later and somebody says ham for no name, what does the loser feel like walking up to get their food? It's like the walk of shame because everybody in the restaurant's looking at them like, oh, that idiot doesn't even know how it works here. Very embarrassing. So we told the cashier, free large drink, make sure the order's right. And then help them through their process. Put them in the loyalty program, automatically enroll them. Here's our loyalty program. What do you think happened to our scores of first time guests when we put this system into place? Through the roof. Now, in which, which you actually make the food off the bag. So that bag hangs up on the line and we read it. What does the one mean to the people making the food? First timer, right? Dude, put a little bit of this in there. Yes, you're supposed to make everything right 100% of the time. Put a little bit of this in there. It helped our scores go through the roof. So again, you may not want to put a first time program in, but can you come up with some problems your guests tell you about that you can solve through systems? Because then you can get the the level of service to a five. This helps our friendliness go up. We'll switch gears now and talk about mission a little bit. How many of you all have a mission statement for your, for your FEC? Some of you do, some of you don't. I simplified it in our case. My director of ops, Albert, was really, really helpful in this. When I, when I went to Chuck E. Cheese, our operating objective was every guest leaves happy. It was very simple. Everybody knew that. It was like the little angel that popped up on your shoulder when somebody says, should you do this or not? What is your mission? I'm going to do a simple example. Everybody close your eyes. Okay, everybody close your eyes. And I want you to point what direction you think north is. Hint, it's not straight up in the air. So just point what direction you think north is. All right, so everybody, um, open, keep your hands where they are, but open your eyes. Where are we pointing? All over the place. Uh, north happens to be this way, because I cheated, okay? It, it, this was not a geography lesson. It's not the point to see if you know what direction north is. But if you don't have a true north for your company, how do we know if we're delivering? How do we know if we're going the right direction? How do your employees know if they're doing the right things? My true north for our company is make the guests say wow. When we first started Witch Witch, we didn't have this as a franchisee. We were trying to figure out what it was, and we, we heard two things from the guests when they came in a lot. We heard, wow, a lot. Wow, you have 50 toppings. Wow, this is confusing. Wow, your employees are so friendly. Wow, I don't know what drugs you give your employees, but keep giving them to them because they're so nice. We heard wow, and we heard holy crap. Now, I couldn't put holy crap into my mission statement, okay? So we made it real simple. It was make the guests say wow. That's it. So when my cashier two days ago when I'm in my restaurant gets a coupon from another franchisee, not our location, we don't own it, and the guest says, will you take this coupon here? 
the little devil pops up on my employee's shoulder and says what? No, no, don't take it, don't take it. What does the little angel pop up and say? Make the guest say wow. And so what do we say to the guest? Yes, we will. Yes, we will. Now think about taking this. This is our true north. Every decision that we do, every decision that we do, this guides us. Do you have that? You need it, because otherwise we're pointing all different directions. Somebody's going to get good service, somebody's not. This generation, the younger ones that work for us, they grew, greet a group of people, hey guys, what's up dudes? I, I'm not a dude to a 16-year-old kid. I'm 51, okay? I'm not a dude to you. They don't know how to talk to people. They need to learn. This gives us that guiding principle. In your arena, I would love for you to take it one, one step further. You have the ability to make your facility make the guests say, wow. I was in a Hard Rock Hotel in the Dominican Republic not too long ago. That was on the way out to the pool. That is absolutely the dumbest thing you could ever see. But what is everybody doing while they're walking out to the pool? They're grabbing their favorite air guitar, and they're playing Hendrix or whoever it was all day. Because what is hard rock trying to get you to do? Interact, rock and roll. Then you go into the casino and above the ATM it says, go on, take the money and run, Steve Miller. The wet floor sign says, slippery when wet, Bon Jovi. They're trying to engage with their facility. Every interaction your guests have with your product, your people or your facility need to make them say, wow. That's when you know you got it. You walk out of a which which restroom that I own, and it says, should I shake your hand on the back of the restroom door? <laughs> Think about that, okay? <laughs> I saw this in St. Louis a couple weeks ago. There's the men's room. There's the ladies' room. <laughs> what do you do when you see something like that? Wow, you laugh. They're engaging the facility to help them, okay? We have to have consistent experience, guest after guest, visit after visit. As an example, is this sign clear? Don't let worries kill you, let the church help. Probably not. Probably not. I always, I always like to tell everybody I gave my kids biblical names. My daughter's Mary Catherine and my son's Satan, okay? No, I'm just, I'm just messing around. So we're, we're trying to create, we're trying to create this epic guest experience. And if we don't have great people, you're not going to be able to deliver this. You can't do extraordinary stuff with ordinary people. So let's talk about how we can attract the right kind of person. This could be eight hours worth of sessions. First of all, get rid of the C players. Get rid of the losers. You cannot deliver great guest experience with people like this. And I'm not talking about the typo, okay? Then we need to attract the right people. Think about working for you versus working in a restaurant. What do we offer? How can we hook people in to come work there? This bus driver ad's not real appealing. Somebody's not going to drive by that bus ad and go, oh my gosh, I need to become a bus driver. When you compare it to these ads, you'll never take your work home with you. In fact, it would be illegal. Or make $16.25 an hour doing what most parents do for free. <laughs> how can you, how can you rebrand your recruiting efforts to get the right people? Because when you put the now hiring banner up or seasonal hiring or whatever it is, you, you're not going to get the right person. We need the rock stars. This is the kind of ad that gets the right person. I was in Buffalo Wild Wings not too long ago and I saw this ad. It's a sticker in the restroom on the mirror. And it's basically the hand-washing sign, but it becomes, if you read the whole thing, it's a recruiting sign. Because who does Buffalo Wild Wings want to work for them? They're guests. They want people that love beer, wing, and sport, beer, beer wings, and sports. They're trying to get them. Their ads are in a different place. We have to get the right people. We walk around with cards in our wallet or whatever to join our team. Because when you're out... I don't care if you're at the bank, at a retail place, or a restaurant. We need to be direct recruiting. Apple stores do this. They do this. They carry these cards around. You can't let that rock star get away. Have those cards available. Be 
recruiting all the time. It's so hard to find great people. Get them from everybody else. Social recruiting is the new one. Social recruiting is very interesting. Somebody one day raised their hand in my presentation and said, you have one follower, you loser. I said, that's not the point of social recruiting. What you do is you can hashtag hospitality jobs or hashtag whatever your city is, and those hashtags get followed by people that may not even know you, they don't follow you. We saw a 4X increase in applications when we started doing social recruiting. We used a third party company to do this. I'm sure you could probably do it yourself or the guys that just talked before. There's probably some smart people in this room <laughs> that could help you. But we're getting the word out. Somebody that may never even know what which which is or considered we're getting the people in. Then when they come in to apply, you have to be good at interviewing. I think many places the interview is just like this. Oh my God, thank God somebody showed up. All right. <laughs> or this person walks in. What does your manager say when this person walks in and says, are you hiring? What are the managers saying? Can you close tonight? When can you start, right? See, but if we don't interview properly, this is what we get in a few weeks. <laughs> it's not good. The interviews need to be very behavior-based. They need to be skills-based. I don't have time to get into that today, but if you look at this cartoon for Ikea, make a seat and take a chair, right? Make a chair and take a seat. What do you need to do at Ikea? You need to know how to put together furniture. We need to have behavior-based interviewing, role play. Get them to demonstrate the skills that we want them to have, okay? Now, let's get into recognition, and I wanna do a simple exercise. We've got about four minutes, I'm gonna wrap this up quick. I'm gonna go through recognition and training in four minutes, but I need you all to stand up and find a partner, okay? Just stand up and find a partner. Determine somebody to be player A, somebody to be player B. Okay, who are my player A's? Player A's, up here. Player A, make a fist. Player A only, make a fist at waist level of player B. Player A, make the fist. Waist level of player B. Who are my player B's? Player B, get the fist open in any way possible, go. Okay, time's up, pencils down, time's up. Time's up, if you did not get the fist open, go ahead and sit down, if you did not get the fist open. Did you get the fist open? How'd you get the fist open? Okay, if you made, if you made it painful to get the fist open, go ahead and sit down. What else did anybody else do? What did you guys do over here? How else did you get the fist open? You asked them, great, if you asked them. That's all there was to this game, right? You tricked it. Anybody, go ahead, everybody sit down. Player A. <laughs> Player A, you were the man, you were the employee. You had the desired behavior in the palm of your hand. Player B, you were the manager. What were most of you trying to do to get the behaviors out of the employee? Force it. Force it. And what happened when somebody was trying to force your hand open? What did you do? You resisted. Think about how we can leverage this power. Ask, would you mind opening your fist? Would you mind saying this instead of that? Bill Clinton said, their good idea is better than our great idea. Their good idea is better than our great idea. If the employees come up with this, ask your team, how can we improve service? How can we build sales? Let them come up with it. It may not be as good as your idea, but you know what? It's their idea and it will work because it's their idea. How many of you all offered money? A few of you. Right? See, offer incentives. We have a catering bonus in our program. I want to build catering sales in my stores. I give them an incentive, 10% of any order they get. Harkening back to my Chuck E. Cheese days when we did use paper tickets, we give our employees smart cards. They're worth a quarter. We pass them out for above and beyond behavior. It could be worth a dollar. It doesn't, the, the value's not really what's important. They can save it, though, for whatever they want and redeem it whenever they want. Somebody gets a good comment, boom, they get some smart cards. Somebody stays late, goes above and beyond, grabs a high chair for a lady, carries it to her table, bang, smart cards. We're recognizing everything that reinforces our mission. The last piece is training. GM ad says, amateurs practice until they get it right, pros practice until they can't get it wrong. Amateurs practice until they get it right, pros practice until they can't get it wrong. I saw this at PALS, they use flashcards. 
You can do them with an app for this younger generation. We use QR codes for training, not marketing, so somebody can walk up there with their phone and watch a video. I don't have to buy any hardware, but I can reinforce what I want. I'm trying to constantly reinforce the employees so they don't have to think. I want it to be natural, second nature to them. I just launched an app for my company. I found a third party to do this. We actually can pop out text notifications to the employees like this one. New LTO starts Monday, click here to see the training video. Because communication in these large facilities that you have is very difficult. If you can put this out to the employees, it's great. I actually just added a feature yesterday. I haven't even rolled it out to my employees yet to try. And uh, they can take maintenance issue pictures and send them to me. So now I can know two-way what's going on in my restaurants. GroupMe is a, a text app that works. Same thing. Now, as I wrap this up, I want to do a simple exercise. Everybody just make the uh, OK sign with your right hand. OK, make the OK sign with your right hand. Now gradually bend your elbow, bring it right up to your face, and stick it on your chin. Now what are most of you doing? I don't know what the hell you're doing. You're sitting there like this. <laughs> what did I say? Stick it on your chin. But most of you are doing what? You're doing what I do. See, it's easy to talk about delivering great service. It's easy to talk about hiring great people. But are we really doing it? You got to lead the charge as a per the person in your organization that can set the tone and set the pace and then hire the right people.